Exilium and Via, Origins, by Tati Versoza. When the world's problems multiplied and became bigger and worse, Nina the superhero and Mary the mystical girl decided to assemble a team of superheroes they would lead to solve these problems and renew goodness and beauty in the world. This is the story of how this team began. Chapter 1, The Plan And it came to pass that Nino and Mary had done many wonderful things for people who were in need all over the world. However, as they did, the world's problems became bigger and multiplied because of the unending pride, greed, selfishness, violence and corruption of a few people. Mankind was in general good. However, a small number of people were corrupting the rest of mankind. And so, one day, Nino had a chat with Mary. Nino, mother, maybe we need a bigger team. I am looking at getting animals, that people love, to participate in solving the world's problems. This will make people realize three things, one that they are not alone in caring for the world, two that the problems are not too complicated and that people just make them look complicated because our animal friends would not see it that way, three, that solving the world's problems can be fun and that there is no place for anger and hatred in doing this. Mary, that is a wonderful idea Nino. But we will also need to enlighten people's minds and soften their hearts so they can accept solutions. Why don't we get the help of the Holy Spirit with this? Nino, brilliant. And I think we will also have to build new things to solve some big world problems. For this, we will need someone who can do this well. I'm thinking of Father Jose. But we will have to go back in time to when he was alive and really good at this. What do you think? Mary, of course. I will visit Father Jose. You can choose the rest of the team and bring them all together. Nino, perfect. I knew I was right in choosing you as my mother. And so, Nino and Mary set about gathering the team. Chapter 2, Spirit the Dove And so, Nino went into prayer to reach the Holy Spirit. As he was one with the Holy Spirit and God the Father, it did not take much effort to do this. The Holy Spirit came from Nino's breast and took the separate form of a white dove. Nino spoke with the Holy Spirit. Nino, dear Holy Spirit, can you join my team with Mother Mary? We need your help in solving the world's big problems. We need to touch the hearts of people and enlighten their minds as part of our plan so that they can accept and make the changes they need to make the world a better place. Holy Spirit, yes Nino, it is true that a big change must be made as you say. So much hunger comes from greed. So much violence and war come from pride. So much injustice comes from corruption. And selfishness is eating the souls of many. If people go on this way, so many souls will be lost. And our loving Father, who is one with us, will feel the sorrow and loss, as we will, since He created mankind in His image. Nino, true. We need you to bring truth and wisdom to the minds and love and caring to the hearts of people we will meet as we solve the world's problems. Mother Mary and I seek your help. We are building a team and implore you to join. Holy Spirit, how can I refuse such a mission? I will join you. We need to have a name though so people can identify and remember us. Since, our mission is to help, why don't we call our team Exilium in Via so people know that help is on its way. And also, I am happy to be called Spirit the Dove so children will feel my warmth more when I talk to them. Nino, fantastic. I love that name. I am sure everyone on the team will love it. And with this, the Holy Spirit reunited with Nino as the dove merged into his breast. Chapter 3, Jose the Builder Mary created a time and space portal and jumped into it. Her target was Nazareth a few years before she herself was born into the world. She felt this was the best time and place to find the right version of Joseph who they needed to join Exilium in Via. Mary was curious as to what she would find. She knew Joseph as her husband when Joseph was much older. He was a kind loving and hard-working husband and earthly father to Jesus. She had only a little knowledge of Joseph's younger days though. After much searching and asking around in the village, she finally found Joseph's ancestral house. She saw the door to a small shack beside the house open. She peeked into the door and saw a young man. The young man was thinly built but muscular. He was working intensely on a small cabinet. He looked tired but happy. Mary thought this might be the young Joseph. She started the conversation. Mary, sir, are you Joseph? Joseph, yes, little girl. How can I help you? Mary, 
I was told by my master to look for a good carpenter who could build big things such as big houses, bridges, boats and maybe even castles. Can you help my master? Joseph, I am only a humble carpenter and have built only small things such as chairs, tables, cabinets and other household furniture. I have no experience building big things yet. I am sorry but I may not be of much help. Mary, but are you willing to help if my master teaches you? You see, he just needs a faithful and loyal helping hand who is willing to learn and work hard for him. Joseph, faithful, loyal and hardworking I surely can be. And I am eager to learn how to build the big things you mentioned. Sure, I am interested in helping your master. Mary, how much should we pay you? Joseph, as you see fit. Like I said, I am happy to be your master's apprentice. Also, my needs are not much so whatever your master can afford, I am happy to accept. By the way, who is your master? Mary, the Lord God himself. Joseph, ah, I see. You must be a temple maiden. Mary, yes, I am, or was. But no, I was sent on this mission by the Lord himself, not the temple priests. I was sent by the future Messiah. I am from the future. At this, Mary revealed her power through a heavenly glow around her form. Joseph was dumbfounded and thought Mary was indeed an angel of God. He fell on his knees. He said in a nervous, pious voice, Let the Messiah, the Lord use my hands according to his will. I am honored by his messenger who has blessed me by her visit. I pray though that she reveals her name so I may bless and honor her as well. At this, Mary was pleased. She said to Joseph, I am Mary. In time, you shall know me. But for now, it is important that you understand our mission. The Lord needs your hands to build big things to help the people of a future time in distant lands. You shall not be alone in this. The Lord will provide you an army to build and you shall lead them. So, stand up Joseph. You shall be called Jose the Builder whenever you are in a mission for the Lord. He shall call you to build soon. At this, Joseph was so grateful and thanked the Lord. He closed his eyes in prayer. When he opened his eyes, Mary was gone. But she left him with four strange things, a very light hammer, a very fine saw, a shining rope, and an unusual measuring stick. The hammer multiplied his hands for a hundred times and could punch a hole through anything. The saw could cut through any wood or stone as if these were butter. Through using the shining rope, he could lift any weight without effort. The measuring stick could bend and could become as long or short as he needed. He then realized that these tools must have been given by the Lord through Mary because of their power, and that his mission was for real. From that day, he started eagerly awaiting the Lord's call to mission every day. Chapter 4, Brutus the Thinker The streets of Tal Town in the Philippines were full of ash. The volcano was erupting, and the people were in panic. Everywhere, the streets were cracking. Steam was coming out of the cracks. Smoke and ash filled the air. The sky was getting dark at noontime. Huddled in a small house were three little children. Their parents were away when tall volcanoes started erupting. They were scared and did not know what to do. Suddenly, a little dog entered their house through the open back door. It was Bruted, the popular street dog. He was barking and wagging his tail as if trying to tell the children something. And he started to talk to the children in their minds. He was saying, Volcano Mad. Come. Brutus help you. Urf, urf. Find way. Run. The children understood and followed Brutus out of the house. Brutus had a plan for successful escape. He always had a good plan for anything he needed to do. Brutus led the children past fallen trees, broken down houses and ash-filled streets until they reached a group of soldiers evacuating the town. When the children were safe, Brutus ran back inside the town to look for more people to save. As Brutus was running back, a huge fiery boulder from the volcano was flying toward him. Brutus ran for shelter into a small hole on the ground. Upon entering the hole, he began falling into a lighted tunnel. At the end of the tunnel, he found himself in a beautiful, quiet place. The place was full of trees, plants and animals and there was no volcano. Someone called him out, a little boy. Boy, hi Brutus. Are you lost? Brutus answered the boy through his mind. Brutus, yes. Afraid volcano. Brutus run. Look people. Firefall. Brutus hide. Urf, urf. 
Boy, you are safe now here. I am Nino. I want to help many people too. Do you want to join me? Brood it, maybe. You have bone. Brood it want bone. Urf urf. Nino laughed heartily. He knew Bruda was going to be a great recruit for the team. Boy, I will give you as many bones as you want if you join me. Is it a deal? Brood it, Brood it happy. Brood it join. Nino kind. Go where? Urf urf. Boy, you can wait here. Here is a bone. Play here for a while until I get back. With these words and a bone for Brutit, the boy disappeared. Brutit found some other dogs in the place and played with them. He was relieved the volcano was gone. He was sorry though for the people he still would have saved if the flaming boulder had not forced him to hide. But he hoped that by joining Nino, he could save them still and many other people in trouble. Chapter 5, Speed the Courier the hurricane had just devastated Queensland. Trees were scattered all over and roads were blocked. Small communities of people were isolated by the blocked roads and debris. Because of this, people could not get food and were starving in these communities. No vehicles could reach them so no food could get to them. Seeing and feeling sympathy for the starving people, a big number of kangaroos met and decided to help them. These kangaroos set themselves up as an army of couriers to deliver food to people. Being nimble, the kangaroos could easily jump through obstacles and barriers on the roads and in the bush. Being fast, they could deliver anything quickly in time to keep people from starving to death. This army of kangaroos communicated with the people in the cities through mental telepathy and asked them to prepare backpacks and food that they would deliver to the isolated communities. And so, the kangaroos went on to deliver food to many people and saved them from starving. In a few days, most of the people were fed. However, some very far towns of course would get the deliveries last. For these, the kangaroo army assigned the fastest kangaroos. One of these was named Speed because he was very fast. Speed could run as fast as 100 km per hour. Speed had already delivered food to 50 communities in just 2 days. As Speed was on his way to a very remote town for his next delivery, a group of greedy hunters saw him and thought of stealing the food for themselves. They also thought of cooking and eating Speed as well. So, they went to the top of the ridge to wait for Speed and shoot him. As Speed was nearing them, they started shooting at him. Speed was able to evade six bullets. As the seventh bullet was fired at Speed, a bright hole in the air, a portal, suddenly opened up. Speed was caught into the portal and the seventh bullet narrowly missed him. On the other side of the portal, Speed landed in a beautiful, quiet place. The place was full of trees, plants and animals and there was no gunfire to be heard. As Speed was hopping around, a boy came up and talked to him telepathically. Boy, you are brave, caring and fast, Speed. I saw how you bravely dodged all those bullets to try to bring food to the people of that remote town. Don't worry, I will make sure the food reaches them. Speed, who you? Nururu. Where me? Boy, I am Nino. I go around helping people, the hungry, the homeless, the endangered, the lonely and the poor. And you are in my paradise here on earth. I will be glad to have you on my team. You could help me in my mission with your speed and agility. Would you like to join me? Speed, save me. Ruru. Hunter's gone. Speed join. Help people. Bring food. With these words, Speed joined Nino. Nino was delighted with his new recruit. Chapter 6, Kara Oak the Herald at Sea Kara Oak knew there was something different in this northern part of the Pacific Ocean. It was much warmer than usual. She used to enjoy swimming in the cooler waters here every week after journeying all the way from the tropics. With this warmer water, the typhoons and hurricanes would surely be born more often and would be stronger. Not only that, there was a new island right ahead of her as she swam. This was so unusual. No island could just emerge in the last week she was away. As she approached the new island, she was shocked by what she heard and saw. Through her sonar sense, Kara Oak sensed it was a big collection of floating garbage. This was surely going to trap the large animals of the sea and poison all sea animals. She had to warn everyone. Kara Oak used her powerful, wide sonar beam to sing her usual warning song. This song could reach all the Pacific through relay by other whales and dolphins. 
This song would warn all sea creatures to watch this part of the ocean to avoid getting caught in the birth and path of a new typhoon or hurricane or any dangerous floating or submerged object. This time, Kara Oak also sang her danger song. This song was the highest warning to all sea creatures to avoid the island of garbage which was a risk to their lives and health. As she was nearly finished singing her second song, she suddenly sensed water movements closing in on her from two opposite directions. Whalers. She had to escape fast. These whalers were merciless. They hunted and killed both for food and fun any large sea creatures they could find. They chased not only whales but also dolphins like her, manatees, sharks, seals and walruses. Karyok sped up their swimming to torpedo level. The whalers though started firing from their boats multiple harpoons at her. She dodged two harpoons. She did not realize there was a third coming from the one of the boats. She thought she was doomed as the harpoon was about a few meters away and closing in accurately and fast. She desperately jumped into the air at the last second to avoid the harpoon. To her surprise, a portal opened in the water as the harpoon passed through where she was about to land. She landed in cool water. The whaler's boats were gone. The island of garbage was gone too. Where was she? She asked herself. Suddenly, she saw a boy walking on the water. The boy talked to her. Boy, hi Kara Oak, that torpedo swim was fantastic. And you have a beautiful signing voice. I loved your songs too. By the way, I am Nino. Kara Oak, chirp. Hello Nino. You saved me. Thanks. Nino, would you like to join me in my mission? I want to save the oceans and all animals in it from the warming and the garbage people dump into them. I would love to have an excellent singer to reach all sea creatures like you on my team. Kara Oak, chirp. Really? But can you swim fast? I will join you if you can beat me in a race. Nino, sure. And Nino showed Karyok how he could swim, he raced her for a minute. Karyok had difficulty catching up. This was humbling for her as she was the best swimmer in the Pacific Ocean. Kara Oak, chirp. I give up. You win. I will join you. But where are we? Nino, oh, we are in the small cove in my paradise. Do you want me to take you back to where you left the Pacific? The whalers are gone. Kara Oak, chirp. It's okay. I am a little tired from torpedoing. Can I stay here? Nino, sure. Be my guest. Nino was excited to see Kara Oak join his mission and team. Chapter 7, Whisper the Herald on Land The land was parched because of the long Australian drought. The summer was very hot, hottest in decades. Trees and plants were very dry. Winds were strong. The landscape was a tinder box. And when the dry storms came, the dry lightning lit up more than a hundred bush fires. Whisper knew she had to act quickly. She was one of the koalas gifted with telepathic powers that could reach land animals over long distances in all directions with her mind waves to send messages. And she knew the bush fires would be big and many. So, Whisper started sending messages, as soon as she saw from her eucalyptus tree top any bush fire starting, to warn all land animals within the reach of her mind waves. She had to message them early so they could run and find safer places and avoid the deadly fire and suffocating smoke. And since she was also part of a network of many telepathic goalas, she also started relaying messages from other goalas about other bush fires to these animals. As Whisper was busy sending messages, a man suddenly set fire to the tree she was on. She could not believe how destructive people could be even during a disaster. She tried to go down the tree, but the flames were moving up. She was so high up so jumping would mean certain death. Bravely, she started sending her last messages, including a message of goodbye to all animals. Suddenly, a hole opened in the sky and she was swallowed into the hole. She ended up landing softly on green grass. As she looked up, there was a little boy standing and handing her water from a bottle. She was so thirsty she drank the whole bottle. The boy then started talking to her in her mind. Boy, hi Whisper. I am Nino. I saw how brave and selfless you were today. Whisper, pity animals. Fire ran all. Must run. Nino, you know, you can help many more animals if you join my team. We have many things we can do, and the team will be glad to add your ability to send mind waves. 
Will you join us please? Whisper, but whisper slow. Whisper walk. That okay? Nino, of course. We will carry you everywhere. And we will make sure to always carry water and a bag of leaves for you. Whisper, whisper eager. Whisper join. With these words, whisper join Nino's team. Nino found her so cute and cuddly too, so he gave her a soft bed on a small tree to rest on whenever she was tired. Chapter 8, Agela the Watcher Agela was a watcher, an eagle with the ability to fly high into the sky and see with his sharp eyes things happening on the ground. He soared through the African skies majestically day and night, he had night vision too. He also had a special skill, like a parrot, he could imitate human words. He normally used his eyes to target his next meal. But he was bored of this. He felt that there was a higher purpose for his abilities. One day, he saw people bleeding and dying in a small town near a jungle. No one was harming them at all. They just started bleeding and dying. Agila decided to help. He swooped down on a building full of people dressed in white. Agila started screaming repeatedly, people dead. People dead. The people were amazed. Agila also started circling the small town. The people in white clothes thought it wise to check the town just in case something bad was going on. After a few hours, emergency vehicles started moving into the town. It was the beginning of an Ebola epidemic. Ebola was a disease that caused bleeding, was very infectious and could kill people in a few days. After a few weeks of watching, Agila saw that the bleeding and dying of people had stopped and the people dressed in white had left the town. People in the town eventually returned to their normal lives. Agila realized that he had somehow been of help to these people and that this might be his higher purpose, to watch from the sky and warn people of other people in danger or in trouble. Upon this realization, a little boy appeared to Agila in the sky as he was soaring high. The boy was flying too. The boy spoke to Agila inside his head. Boy, I am Nino. I knew you would realize someday that your special abilities, your gifts, were for a higher purpose. My mission is to help people in trouble now and to keep them away from danger in the future. Your sharp eyes and ability to speak human words would be a big help in this mission. Will you join me in this noble cause? Agila, I have always waited for this day. I was a king of the skies for so long, but it felt empty. I would rather serve and feel I have helped because this is my higher purpose. I accept. These noble words from Agila made Nino feel proud of his final recruit. Chapter 9, The Gathering Paradise was busy. Nino and Mary had just arrived, and they were excited as members of their new team started arriving and introducing themselves through mental telepathy. Spirit the Dove, I am Spirit. I can see the hearts and souls of men. I spread the truth to enlighten. I touch and soften the hearts of men. Jose the Builder, I am Jose. I am a humble carpenter. But as apprentice to Nino, I am eager to learn to build big things to help people in the world. Brooded the thinker, I brood it. Good mind. Solve problems. Earth Earth. Speed the courier, me speed. Ru Ru Ru. Run fast. Deliver goodies. Kara Oak, the herald at sea, chirp. I am Kara Oak. I swim fast. I sing songs to warn others of danger in the ocean. Whisper. The herald on land, whisper. Mind warn. Danger others. Whisper slow. Carry me. Everyone laughed fondly at Whisper's innocent request. Agila, I am Agila. Watcher of people in danger were in trouble. Then Mary spoke, I am Mary, mother of Nino. I will be your helping hand and comfort when you find our missions and our work difficult. Finally, Nino spoke too, I am Nino the first and the last in the team. I lead and serve you. Our mission is to help people now and for the future. We will help build a better world through our missions. I am very happy and proud to welcome you all to our team. You are all superheroes already in your own lives. But now, you will become more than that. You will now become super servants, as Mother Mary and I both are, helping mankind and the world in the service of God our Father. We will defeat evil. But we will never harm nor let anyone, or any creature be harmed as we defeat evil. And our team shall be called Exilium and Via, help is on the way. Everyone then fell silent. They felt a burning inspiration lit by Nino's words. 
they all suddenly felt the feeling of love for and the urge to help every person and creature in the world. They all felt a duty to make the world a better place they all felt the need to act quickly and start their mission. Then, Agila broke the silence and mimicked Nino's words into a cheer, long live Exilium and Via. Viva AU Vi. Then everyone followed and repeated the cheer loudly, long live Exilium and Via. Viva AU Vi. Viva AU Vi. Viva AU Vi. Viva AU Vi.